Sam, let's start with you. And I was wondering if you could sort of set up who the life is that we meet at the beginning. Yeah, life. Uh, I think we see a man who grew up in Greenland in a very harsh environment, very survivalist um, kind of way. And in a household in which his father is notoriously one of the most violent Vikings. And we see him coming over with his Greenlander community um, and with his sister in order to uh, get vengeance for something that uh, has happened to his sister. And amidst that, uh, the attainment of that vengeance, he is taken into the, the broader Viking world of Harald Hardrada, Olaf and King Canute and a whole new world that he has not been aware of, but um, attempts to stay firm in who he is. <laughs> yeah. And Leo, how, how about Harold? Who is he when we meet him? He's a young man and he's a young prince uh, with sort of quite simple view on life. He's got a simple view of what's right and wrong. And he knows that what happened in England at the St. Bryce's Day massacre is wrong and he wants revenge. And he also knows that that's a bigger issue than the, the rift that's forming between Christianity and paganism. Um, but also he's a little naive with that young, with that youth, that hot headedness. He doesn't realize that life can be a bit complicated and he's, his main ambition is to become king of Norway. Right. But it ain't that simple. And there are twists and turns and, and people cross him and go behind his back. Uh, and he's going to have to really draw upon the friendships that he's garnered with Leif Erikson and the intimate relationship he's developed with Leif's sister, Freydis Edikstotter. Can you guys both, um, Frida and Caroline, set up who your who your characters are when we meet them? Because everyone sort of goes through a, a bit of a journey this season. Maybe Caroline, you a bit less so, since uh, you're already in charge. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So we, when we first meet Freydis, she is on a quest for revenge. She is coming in from Greenland, from the outskirts of the Viking world, and she's kind of a stranger to Kattegat and you know the the Viking world. Um, she is a strong believer in the old ways and she's a pretty feisty woman. So um, yeah, that's where we meet her for the first time. Yeah. And Jarl Håkan obviously is the ruler of Kattegat and it's peaceful times. She tries to rule with tolerance, but a change is happening as she says. And she meets Freydis and she sees potential in this young woman. I think both of the guys that you're playing are extremely ambitious. Uh, but there's different things driving them. Could you each address that? Maybe Johannes, you want to go first? Well, love is driving Olaf. The love of life. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> now he's a power hungry madman, isn't he? Uh, he just, he, well, the thing is, he, he's striving to, to gain control and power over other people and regions when all he really needs to is to gain control of himself. <laughs> Will he realize that? We don't know, but we'll find out. Right. Bradley. All he needs is a hug. <laughs> He's not going to get one, especially from your character, King Canute, Bradley. What, what's uh, what's going on with him? Because uh, we see him really reaching for, for power as well. He's ambitious. Yeah, and he's just got this eternal pain in his backside in Olaf. It's just, you know, dragging him down. Now, I think Canute's, uh, you know, um, got his work cut out. There's, um, there's warring factions within the uh, Viking kingdom between the uh, old pagan religion, this newfangled Christianity that's wheedling its way through the, the people and he needs to, to bring the tribes back together and, and, and uh, unite them as one Viking nation to, um, to uh, take revenge upon them. The, the, the massacres of, of uh, the, the, the Vikings in uh, Saxon England. So that's his main goal to begin with. Yeah. That'll, I, do, that'll do to begin with. <laughs> Just for starters, for starters. Just for starters, yeah. And then I'm guessing you think that, uh, that your character is motivated uh, by country and family? Would that be fair to say? Or I don't know, you tell me. You tell me about it. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that's very astute and um, pretty much spot on. I think there is a certain amount of his past that he wishes to save his children from having to go through. I think he wishes that they have a, a father who doesn't, in want of a better phrase, fuck it up for them. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of national identity and nationhood, that's a really interesting one because 
we've spoken about this a lot, but there wasn't an England. Uh, there, there was never really one. You had, you had, I guess, King Alfred, who was the first king of England by name, but he was really just the king of Wessex. He just managed to ally on everybody. But then you have the Dane law slightly later on coming through and the whole thing gets fractured and you still got mercy now. And then the Vikings are in. So the, the, the whole nationhood thing is, is an interesting one. And I don't personally believe that that is Godwin's ambition, but I do believe that he feels like perhaps the country and the country's best chance of a fruitful future is one where it is not run by people who come from the outside. But that is not to say that he doesn't give them an opportunity to try.